people next to you. Amen. Before you see it, tell them that, tell them that you're, you're glad to see them tonight. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. What a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. And I want to jump right into this uh, Bible study for tonight. And uh, we have, I'm going to say one or two, uh, I'm saying one or two, uh, more Bible studies for the apostolic lifestyle. Then we're going to change gears and we're going to go into to a brand new study. And it kind of uh, it has spawned this tonight. I'm going to give you a little preview. Everybody say preview. preview. I'm going to give you a little preview of what we're going to be getting into. For a long time, I, I've always wanted to do studies of complete books of the Bible. I'm talking from, to, you know, our, to do our best to go from chapter 1, verse 1, all the way to the end. So uh, we're going to be doing a study um, on the book of Ephesians. We're going to get into the book of Ephesians. How many like the book of Ephesians? Oh, yeah. You ought to. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in there. And so this is going to be a little uh, preview or precursor or an introductory study into, thank you, the book of Ephesians. But it really goes along with what we've been talking about. And it's also um, what, what I'll probably do next Wednesday. Um, probably get into some detailed things uh, there at the very end of our Inside Out, and then we'll we'll move on into this. But as we enter into this Bible study tonight, again, we're, I'm not. It's not my plan to stray away from Inside Out. Not my plan at all to uh, you know to to try to back off of it before we finish. I mean, after um, you know, as I've said, I, I love the Book of Ephesians, and there's some scriptures in here that we're going to touch that I think are very important. But let me just say this. Uh, and when we go into these studies, whether it's apostolic lifestyle or whether it's the book of Ephesians or whatever, these things are meant to help you in your journey in your relationship with God. That's what these things are for. And I realize it's tempting on a midweek to come in and you're kind of weary in the flesh because you've had a rough couple days or three days. And, and you know, I don't know, maybe your tooth got jerked out of your head and the side of your face is swollen the size of a basketball. I don't know. No, I'm just playing with it. I know Sister Inman is, she's plugging away, even though she's had that. I don't know if it's a jerk that or head, but she got some pain going on. But uh, I realized that. I realized that it would be so easy for you to balance your checkbook or write a note to your neighbor or think about your grocery list, whatever. Please don't do that. Please pay attention to the Word of God. Because somewhere between now and the time we close, you're going to hear something, and then you're going to go home and try to expound on it, and you're going to miss it on all points. I promise you. Because you need to listen to what the Word of God says, okay? So if I just have your undivided attention, we want to get right into this. Um, hopefully as you progress, you're going to fall in love with, with not only this lifestyle, but the book of Ephesians also. But let's ask, let's ask this question. Where does... Uh, this fit into the scheme of things concerning apostolic lifestyle. For instance, what you and I know about God and what we do for God, they have a way sometimes of getting broken apart in our lives. What we know about God and what we do for God, those things sometimes break apart. Now, now I want you to understand this. The moment the unity of belief and behavior, write this down, the moment... The moment that the unity of belief and behavior is damaged in any way, we are incapable of living out the full humanity of which we were created. It's not enough for us to just believe. We have to have a behavior that supports our belief. We have to have a lifestyle that supports what we believe. And really, that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Brother McCain, I think so. I mean, that's kind of what I've uh, determined in, in reading of the Scriptures, belief and behavior in life, especially in this lifestyle, we must have a unity of the two. Sure. Brother Evan, get for me the book of James, chapter 2, verses 18 through 20. And uh, I'm going to have you read in just a minute. But uh, we, we have to, to really know that it is good for you to believe in God. It's awesome. You've got to have belief in God. But it is equally, if not more so important, 
for you to have a behavior that supports that belief. Amen. To behave in a way that would support it. Read for me James chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. So thy faith, without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. He says, Show me your faith without your works. And I will go a step further. Everybody say a step further. Yes, I will show you my faith and I'll show it to you by my works. Here's what he's saying. When you tell me you believe without works, i got to take your word for it. But when I tell you I believe, my life proves yes. that I believe. In fact, my works are so evident, you don't always have to tell me what you are. I can see what you heard. Okay? Read the next scripture. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. Yes. The devils also believe I tremble. I love Brother Perry uh, has said it before. I don't know where it came from, if he thought of it or it actually happened in this church or whatever, but, you know, I, I've, and I've heard other preachers say it. Uh, you know, you can say you believe in God, but, um, and that's pretty good, but I'd hate to say that I didn't do any more than the devil did. The right. devil did. You know, the devils believe. The devils believe and they tremble. Yeah. How about this? The devils actually have a work behind their faith. Yeah. <laughs> their work is they tremble. Right. Even the devils have faith with works. Anyway. Okay, so the devils believe and tremble. Read, read verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay, you can stop right there. Your behavior supports your belief in all things. The works are not just those things that are done, but they are those things that are lived. Oftentimes when we read that word works, our mind instantly goes to feeding the poor or, or helping some, feeding the hungry or, or helping the poor or changing a flat tire or holding the door for somebody. We co constitute that as works. But you have to understand that our life is work. Yes. Also. Anybody know that life is work? Yes. you got to work at life. Yes. And here's the truth of it. That sin will do everything it can. To separate your faith. From your work. Sin will do everything in your life. To separate your faith. From your work. Now it's obvious that the enemy. Out of the, our enemy. The devil. Does not want you to have faith. But if you have it, he works very hard trying to prevent you from living it. See, the enemy has learned how to manipulate things in your life to keep you from working. He's learned how to manipulate situations. The devil may not have given you a flat top. Okay? But he'll manipulate that. He'll take that situation. You know, the devil has a hard time picking on people that say, even if i got to walk to church, I'm going to get there. Right, right. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, I know a lot of people that, that have every reason to stay home from church if they really wanted to, but they don't. And the enemy knows that he can't manipulate situations in their life to get them to lay down and to quit and to bow out. Because you have to have a love and a resolve that says it's more than I just believe in God, yeah. but I have a behavior that supports that belief. Yeah. So what we have to realize is that if we are caused by the manipulation of the enemy to be unfaithful, then our relationship can be broken. When we let things come between us and our relationship with God, our relationship with church, which uh, 